If plant-based meat has been gaining ground over recent years, it's mainly been due to the decrease in consumption of meat in all Western countries. Because unlike plant-based meat, intensive animal farming has a disastrous environmental impact. What with the needs in water, agricultural land and forage, producing one kilogram of beef means using 15,500 liters of water, while one kilogram of plant-based steak only requires 1,300 liters of water. Livestock is also responsible for 14.5% of greenhouse gas emissions and 70% of worldwide deforestation. So if in addition, we were to be promised plant-based meat, which is as tasty as a nice steak, for a lot of consumers, the choice would be obvious. A new market is born. Riding on this phenomenon, all the major supermarket chains have been going green, setting off a little revolution on their shelves. In this hypermarket, the vegetal range now occupies a whole section, including veggie burgers, falafels, breaded products, and nuggets made from high-protein leguminous plants. Enough to make any client's head spin. And giving ideas to many brands wishing to jump on the bandwagon. The meat substitute category in supermarkets has recently been soaring and is expected to reach a global turnover of around 22 billion euros by 2025. Hello. Would you like to try some? This is an alternative to meat, which is purely plant-based, based on seeds and vegetables. Here you have spicy sausage, mints, natural strips and nuggets. I'm sure you'll be surprised. These are the nuggets? That's right. These products are 100% local. Surprising, no? It's nice and firm. Do you pan fry them? You do them in a pan like ordinary nuggets, just with a little oil or butter, and you turn them three to four minutes on each side. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. Hello. Would you like to try? Not bad. Ah, Not mal. bad, is it? <laughs> Alice Marchand is product manager for this distributing brand, which has become popular. Our biggest seller is the wheat and onion nuggets, which you see here. One pack of nuggets out of 10 that we sell today, including the poultry ones, is plant-based. People are increasingly open to new ways of eating, to new products. We attract anyone who's curious, because I think it comes down to curiosity. You try, and then little by little, it enters your way of consuming and goes onto your weekly shopping list. When it comes to drastically reducing meat consumption and replacing it with vegetal goods, although today's consumers are not necessarily vegetarian, they're not just carnivores either. They're adapting. About a third of households worldwide now consider themselves flexitarian, meaning that they only eat meat from time to time, sometimes replacing it with plant-based products. Products based on leguminous crops, like those grown here in Brittany, in the west of France. It's in France's leading agricultural region that faba beans, wheat, lentils, and soya beans are grown the principal raw materials used to make meat substitutes. Amongst these crops, this is the star of the moment, pisum sativum, in other words, the pea. With 21% protein for 100 grams, the pea puts other leguminous plants to shame. As I was saying, it's a constant balancing act to obtain as many peas as possible while remaining agronomically achievable. From there on, we can never be sure about output, which is dependent upon weather conditions. It will soon be time to harvest. The head of the organic farm has come to evaluate the maturity of the peas. Let's see how they're doing. The peas, which are almost fully ripened, are here. Here you have the pods. He's accompanied by Thomas Delourme, the technical manager, and Guillaume Bies, a regular client who uses peas as the main ingredient in his vegetal recipes. 
La couleur est importante. The color is important, meaning you need seeds which are as pale as possible, as yellow as possible, so that the agribusinesses can achieve the most neutral color possible in their final products. This way they can color them as they see fit, or in any case, have a neutral base which won't raise too many questions for the end consumer. This one is nice. We won't use it as it is. We'll transform it into a sort of textured pea protein. This will then become the base for creating our products, whether they be plant-based burgers, meatballs or nuggets from our current range. We try to master the whole production chain, from the field to the plate. Sure enough, barely seven kilometers away, the harvested peas arrive at a factory which transforms nearly 70 tons of peas and beans each week. A 10% boom, which is echoed around the world and confirms the genuine enthusiasm for this type of product. We're going to go upstairs and I can show you how we produce our concentrated proteins. Thomas de Lourme explains the different stages of transformation to his client. So the peas, crushed and separated from their pods, arrive in this machine. The starch is heavier, so it tends to fall to the bottom, whereas the proteins are lighter and can be skimmed off the top. Here you have the external pea pods, and here you have what is rich in protein, which is the finer part. This is what we use to produce the textured protein. The flour is then heated to 100 degrees. The protein powder turns into granules due to the heat. It's shaped and compacted into thin strands to visually imitate the texture of minced meat from the butchers. So, we're going to try these proteins? That's right, exactly. This is the product straight from the machine, the dried pea textured protein. And in the same way as you do at the factory, I'm going to rehydrate it so that you can have a taste. I've made you a mince mixture, as you would typically use for a plant-based meatballs or burgers. After a few minutes, the product is completely rehydrated, and I invite you to taste it if you'd like to. I'll spoon some up, and you can put it in your hand. It has a great texture, which is very interesting. In terms of taste, it's not bad either. It's quite light, you don't sense the vegetal aspect. It's important for us to be able to rework this base material while keeping this texture and chewiness, which of course we want the product to have. It's very interesting. For the moment, any resemblance with steak stops here. To obtain a taste which is closer to meat, a few additional manipulations will be necessary. So, to the second stage, mixing and shaping. The dish of the day, soya bean meatballs. As surprising as it may seem, one of the main ingredients of the recipe is simply water. With our plant-based meatballs, the base is protein. And today, a protein base means soya beans, which are organic, from the southwest of France, and which are not genetically modified. So we receive the raw material like this, which is dry, textured protein, as you see here. We soak it in water to expand it, to rehydrate it, which gives you this product. We do a somewhat empirical test to see if the hydration level of the product is good. You can do it manually, you can squeeze in the protein, and if you have a few drips like this, you have the visual indication that the product is hydrated to the desired level. To make good vegetal mince, you need to add powdered beetroot to imitate the blood red of meat, egg white, potato starch, salt, pepper, yeast, coconut fat mixed with clarified butter, and finally, soybean oil to caramelize the mince during cooking. These ingredients simply help us to add some color, a bit of taste, and to texture our product during the fabrication process. So when you cook our burgers, vegetal meatballs or nuggets, you end up with the same texture, the same taste, the same organoleptic qualities that you get when you cook beef, chicken or pork. Once all these ingredients have been weighed and the proteins hydrated, we put them in the mixer and mix all the ingredients strictly controlling the different parameters. At what moment such and such an ingredient is added, the temperature, to end up with a stuffing which is cohesive and which can next pass through our machines. 
The stuffing, which we made over there, arrives here and is loaded into the machine, and when it comes out the other side, you have vegetal meatballs. So begins the dance of the veggie meatballs. They're shaped and frozen. Then they're boxed and sent off to restaurants and school canteens. Maximilian Nguyen, head of the Vegetal Meat Company, has come to ensure that production is carried out correctly. How are you? How are you? In terms of output, in terms of quality, is everything good? Yes, everything's fine. Everything's approved. Since starting up his company three years ago, Maximilian has always had the same objective, obtaining meat which is truer than nature, capable of attracting everyone. The younger generations are already implicated and consume this type of product. The older generations are beginning to follow suit. So we're looking to target as many people as possible. We want to have an impact on consumer society. Paradoxically, we're not targeting vegans or vegetarians who represent a few percent and already have products with which they're very happy. Without excluding them, we target the average person in the street, the flexitarians, people who eat meat and sometimes fancy a change, but don't want to lose the taste, lose the habitual pleasure, or what reminds them of their childhood. They still want traditional dishes like steak and chips, burgers, shepherd's pie, and meat sauces. But even though plant-based produce now prides itself on perfectly imitating meat, can it replace it on our plates? Can our bodies harvest the same benefits from it? Parfait. To find out, we're off to Clermont-Ferrand in central France, home of agronomic research. This is where university lecturer and specialist in food proteins, Stéphane Volrand, studies the possibility of doing away with our good old steak. So, can we replace the proteins in meat with proteins found in plant-based food? Yes, it's completely doable. There are a few conditions to respect. The first condition is eating a large enough quantity of vegetal products, because they are far less rich in proteins than animal products. That's the first point. So what would be the equivalence with a portion of meat? A portion of meat is 125 or 130 grams. It's the size of a burger. So if I take 100 grams of cooked rice and 100 grams of cooked lentils and I mix 100 grams and 100 grams, I have 200 grams of food, which provides me with the same quality of protein as my steak. The association of cereals and leguminous products is necessary to provide sufficient protein. So to obtain a balanced diet, you need to mix cereals, such as rice, wheat, corn, or quinoa, with legumes, such as lentils, split peas, red beans, and green beans. If we take a look at ancestral dishes, we notice that in African countries, for example, couscous didn't used to have meat in it. But they realized that if they only ate semolina, they fell ill. On the other hand, by adding chickpeas to it, the problem disappeared. Children grew normally, so it became customary to eat couscous with semolina and chickpeas. If you take South America, they mix rice with red beans. In India, they mix certain cereals with lentils, etc., etc. So looking at different countries of the world, you realize that, at an ancestral level, they already knew how to make healthy dishes when it wasn't possible to raise animals, or at least to have access to animal products. Even though, in terms of protein, vegetal products might compare with meat, there is nonetheless a hitch. It's in terms of vitamins that things go awry. The major difference between animal products and vegetal products is when it comes to vitamin B12. There isn't any vitamin B12 in the vegetal world. Our bodies don't know how to produce it. If our diet doesn't provide it, we have a deficiency and illnesses appear. 
So we'd be obliged to take compliments, to go to the chemist and buy vitamin cocktails, which contain vitamin B12. Round off our shopping with a trip to the chemist. Why not, after all, if the survival of the planet depends on it? Not to mention the future of our dear cows.